Today's video is on one of our favorite addictions, alcohol. Chances are, if you know an addict or are an addict yourself, you've seen some pretty crazy things done to get a fix. And while we rarely like to talk about our intoxicants publicly, there's almost nowhere on this planet that people haven't gone through some extreme lengths to fill that bottle. So in light of this, I'd like to propose a theory to you. I think the reason humans started farming was so we could get drunk. I'm standing in Areni, a town in southern Armenia that has a cave that contains remnants of the oldest winery ever found. It's over 8,000 years old and uses technology so complex that there's little reason to presume it wasn't built off ideas that were already present for thousands more. We've been getting hammered, sloshed, ripped, bombed, turnt, whatever the kids are saying these days, for as long as there's been civilization. And if you think about it, it makes sense why. Because what are the effects of alcohol? Reduced inhibition, lower sensations of pain, and increased euphoria. It's basically liquid courage. And if you were a hunter-gatherer in the Neolithic era, chances are your life was pretty painful and devoid of entertainment. You would have had fire, storytelling, and the stars, but those aren't exactly Deadpool on an IMAX screen. And on top of that, your inhibitions would have constantly needed lowering. So many of your daily choices would have been risking life and limb. If we can discern anything from the few remaining tribes that practice a hunter-gatherer existence, to defend your lands, your life would have been on the constant brink of small-scale war. But even without other tribes to fight, you would have been at war with nature. You would have hunted by hand with all the risks that came with it. Your world would have been filled with tusks, teeth, claws, and muscle, and you would have had virtually nothing to ease the pain, nothing to convince you to take those risks beyond hunger. Yet, even still, farming would have been worse. Humans have been farming for roughly 12,000 years, and from a modern perspective, the shift to agriculture makes perfect sense. Hindsight in this case is perhaps even better than 2020. The yields we bring in today from a day's work on the farm more than make up for the energy lost. But that wasn't always the case. Selective breeding over thousands of years has led to crops that barely resemble their forebears. A modern ear of corn is a thousand times larger than its ancestor. Watermelons have grown 200 times their size. Peaches, 65. It's the same story for all our grains, all our fruits, all our vegetables. They all contain more water, more sugars, and more nutrients. 10,000 years has a way of changing things. So if you were a hunter-gatherer, picking nuts and berries and moving with the seasons, there would have been virtually no reason to start farming in those early days. It just wouldn't have made sense. The costs drastically outweighed the rewards. Farming life, or ranching life for that matter, would have meant a whole slew of problems. It would have meant more energy spent per calorie gained, and on top of that, living with animals in close quarters would have drastically increased the number of illnesses present in society. It would have opened up the tribe to more raids, more risk, and a greater opportunity for complete collapse. In a world of migrancy, a static food source is an easy target. The only way to steal from a hunter-gatherer is to hunt or gather faster, but you can steal a farmer's entire livelihood in a day. Farming physically weakened us. Early farmers were shorter, sicker, and less muscular than their hunter-gatherer counterparts. They worked longer hours, had shorter lives, and fewer children. While they may have gained some stability, by sticking to one location, it made them vulnerable to both raids and changes of the climate. In short, it sucked. And yet, we did it. We chose to start farming and stuck to it, even with all those reasons not to. And not just in one place spreading out from the center, but around the globe autonomously. At almost exactly the same point in time, without so much as a word spoken between them, communities on almost every continent began to grow crops. Against their better judgment, to the detriment of their health, and to the increase of their workloads, they farmed. But what interests me, at least in the confines of this story, is that in all of those same locations, we started brewing alcohol virtually immediately. In almost every one of those locations that we found proto-agriculture, we found unique and separate forms of farm-based intoxicants. In China, they found a 7,000-year-old type of beer that combined rice with the community's spit. It fermented in their mouth as they chewed. But it's almost certainly older than that. We only know about it because of the clay jars they stored it in. Even in the modern day, Amazonian tribes and their descendants still practice an incredibly similar method of fermentation to produce a drink called kawim. Whether you believe it's why we put those first grains in the ground or not, within a few hundred years of settling into a farming lifestyle, we now know that early agriculturalists were putting a great deal of their time and yield into producing alcohol. 
And the further you look at the effects of fermentation, the more it makes sense to brew your grains. Beer is known as liquid bread for a reason, and even that is somewhat of an insult to beer, because bread is actually much harder to make, and from a nutritional standpoint, it's a worse use of resources. While they certainly weren't producing the craft what have you that everyone's drinking nowadays, to a people that were looking for a repeatable, non-perishable food source, beer would have been a godsend. On top of that, crops last longer when they're fermented. Grapes may only remain edible for a few days, but wine can be kept for years. And although it seems counterintuitive, it's safer. Because before refrigeration and clean water, having access to a somewhat safe, reliable, filling drink would have provided a form of stability that might just have made farming worthwhile. And clearly, something kept us going. There are very few hunter-gatherer societies today. But let's get back to addiction. Imagine if you can for a second that the people of Kentucky could grow Percocet on trees. It would physically harm them. It would make them weaker, their children would suffer, and their bank accounts would collapse. But as long as they stuck to it, they'd have Percocet. Anyone who knows an addict knows that Kentucky would be forested like never before. Given the genetic susceptibility of many indigenous peoples to alcoholism, I don't think it's a huge stretch to think that at the dawn of agriculture, most people would have yet to build up a tolerance to addiction. Perhaps in turn, they forested the world in grains. As I see it, there's more to life than survival, and I'm certain that was the case even when survival was hard. Human society may have changed, but I don't believe that human nature has advanced all that far. If you'd never been drunk before, if you had no concept of alcohol whatsoever, a glass of wine might seem otherworldly, religious even. It would change your body chemistry to desire it beyond reason. It would lower your heart rate and calm your nerves. It would reduce pain and paranoia. It would taste sweet and feel euphoric. And it would last. There would be nothing else like it on Earth. It might even be worth farming. Because love it or hate it, there's nothing more human than addiction. This is Rare Earth. second taxi it broke down well about a minute and a half after our first taxi so here we are at the uh, the mechanic it's been it's been pretty good we've been on the road for about 30 minutes we've gone I'm gonna say four kilometers and we've broken two taxis so I'm hopeful that we get the third taxi and I'm hoping it breaks before we leave Erevan we'll see so far so far I would say that that is likely given the last two uh, it's kind of fun I actually like it we have nowhere to be. It's on. <laughs>